Now this video is brought to you by Sayerite. In this video we're going to be showing you how to reupholster your headboard using fabric. Using a fabric you can coordinate with other pieces in your bedroom or home. Brian, one of the managers here at Sayerite, is going to show us how it's done. You'll notice that the process is very simple. We're going to take fabric, we're going to add some batting, and we're going to staple that to a backer board. This batting is available at Sayerite, and we're going to use one layer of batting. Though, if you want a little bit more plush of a feel, you can use two layers or more. Brian's using a medium density fiber board, and he's routered the edges. This board works great, though other boards can be used as well. He'll position the board over the batting and the fabric to ensure that there's enough material to wrap around the edges and be stapled. We'll cut it to size. There are hundreds if not thousands of fabrics that can be chosen at the Sayerite website. If you have questions about what type of fabric to pick, be sure to give us a call or visit our website and browse through all of our patterns, colors, and styles. For this upholstered headboard, we're using the PK Lifestyles fabric from Sailrite. As you can see, Brian uses his entire hand to be sure that the fabric is nice and taut and then staples it in place with the dual fast electric stapler, though a standard aero stapler will work just as well. When upholstering and stapling fabric, it's not a good idea to use your thumb and your forefinger to pull the fabric. You're likely to get a tight spot. Instead, use your hand, as you see Brian doing here. And tension the fabric with the length of your hand, and your results will be a lot cleaner. As we come to the corner, we'll place a staple close to the corner, but before we get there, we want to cut some of this excess batting out. Just fold it in half and cut it so that it's almost flush with the board. Now there's not nearly as much bulk at the corner. We'll place a few staples closer to that corner, then we'll fold the material at the corner until we're pleased with the way it looks. Brian is not tensioning the fabric very tight at all. There is no right or wrong way to do this. If you'd like a little bit more taut fabric over the batting, just apply a little bit more pressure here. Brian's pleased with the way this lays, and this is the back side, so no one is really ever going to look at it. Uh, but there's what the corner looks like finished. He did not pull it very tight, but it still looks great. That I found that I could get it smoothest by working towards myself. And that's the reason I'm working the manner I am. Brian found that upholstering was easier if he upholstered towards himself, so that's what he's doing now. Anytime you do upholstering, you'll find little tricks that'll make it easier for you. Along the bottom edge, he's going to trim off the excess batting and fabric, and he's going to wrap the fabric around that bottom edge as well. He'll have a cutout for the legs that will be used to attach the headboard to the wall. Now he'll simply staple the bottom portion as he did around the other three sides. Next we'll show you an illustration of how Brian's actually going to be hanging this headboard. Those boards on the back side will be used at the bottom with screws that will screw into the wall and at the top of those boards he'll install hangers where he can hang the board. The bottom edge of this headboard will not be visible, the mattress will be there. However, Brian is still going to upholster where those boards have been attached, so he's going to secure a few staples here. This is where he will screw those boards into the wall after the headboard has been hung by the hangers at the top of those boards, as illustrated earlier. To add some class to this headboard, we're going to install some fabric buttons. We're going to show you how to make those next. Brian's going to use the same PK Lifestyle fabric to create this button form. These button forms can be purchased from Sailrite, and he cuts it to a square and then to a circle with approximately a half inch of extra fabric around the entire perimeter of the button form. 
These button forms do take a little bit of practice. Brian has installed numerous uh, button forms, so he knows how to do it. But as you can see here, just tuck the fabric behind the backer plate until the fabric is all tucked in place. Then you can assemble the backer plate and it snaps into place. After a little bit of practice, two or three of these button forms, you'll be making them in no time, three to four minutes per button. By utilizing a screwdriver like this, it's easier to tuck the fabric. Notice that Brian is also holding the backer plate in place with his thumb. Don't snap it in place until you're happy with how the fabric is tucked behind. Once you're happy with the looks, it's now time to push the backer in place. It's a good idea to lay the button on top of a soft surface like this batting material or foam and then insert the screwdriver in the slot and push down on the backer until it snaps. It may snap a few times until it's totally secured on the button securing the fabric over top of the form. And that's all there is to it. She looks beautiful. Three holes have already been drilled into the headboard where we want each one of these button forms to be installed using an eighth inch drill bit. If you have not done that and already have installed the fabric, be careful to drill through the board only from the back side. Do not drill through the batting or through the fabric if you've not done this already. We did not show that. Using a number 16 hand needle and some twine, we're gonna thread the needle. This is a pre-waxed twine that we're using, though a heavy duty twine will work just as well. Insert the needle through the hole on the back side of the board and push it through the fabric on the front side. Then run the twine through the loop on the back side of the button form. Then poke the needle through the fabric yet again through that hole that we've inserted into the board to the back side. Now simply tension the thread from the back side of the board until you get the appropriate look that you're looking for. It can be fairly loose or as tight as you'd like it, all the way drawn up to the board if you choose. Once you're happy, you can use a stapler again and staple the twine on the back side of the board so that it holds securely. We're going to attach one staple there and then run the twine up vertically and attach another staple. Then we'll run it down again and attach a third. Just secure it so that it never comes loose. There we go. Brian has opted to install three buttons in his headboard, so he'll do that next. And we'll cut off the excess, and we're just about done. Anywhere the fabric is a little bit loose, you can install more staples. Here's the materials list of the items that were used to build this upholstered headboard with buttons. These are some of the popular brands of fabrics that can be chosen to build a headboard application like this. And even though Sayrite sells a wonderful stapler, a standard stapler that you may already have will work perfect for this application. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sarat website or subscribe to the Sarat YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sarat that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.